Good morning everyone and welcome to the next video in the cybersecurity space. Uh, we are going to discuss the certified ethical hacking certification in this video. So why do we want to get the certification and what would it mean by being a CEH certified uh, per individual? Take this into consideration. You are applying for jobs and uh, you have been applying for cybersecurity related jobs of course and you go in for an interview. In the interview you are asked quite a few questions and they will be testing you on cybersecurity concepts. So they will be asking you a lot of technical questions about cybersecurity, about information security, and any other related topic. So let's say in a few minutes into the interview, there are some concepts that you have not brushed your skills upon, and they ask you about certifications. And one of the main certifications that is sought after is the CEH certification. And if you're not certified, that's where things can become a little bit problematic where organizations today very proactively start looking for people or candidates who are already certified rather than take them on board and get them certified. So in this scenario, uh, having a certification would obviously help not only to be uh, shortlisted for the job, but the certification involves a lot of training which would help you understand the concepts and prepare you for the interview uh, a lot better as well, right? So getting yourself certified is quite necessary in today's world. Let's look at what the certification is all about. The certification involves a very hands-on training that trains an individual into thinking about cybersecurity from a hacker's perspective. And developing this mindset is very important because to catch a thief, we have to think like a thief. Teaches the candidate to spot vulnerabilities in a system, so it trains you on how to identify flaws, how to verify that they exist, and then how to treat them as well. Like I said, this is a very sought after certification and companies look for people who are already certified as CEH or a certified ethical hacker. So what is this certification all about? Uh, this is a globally accepted certification and it tests the knowledge that a candidate may, will have about threats and their prevented, preventive mechanisms. So the certification, the exam itself will test you on the parameters, the training would provide you with all the information that you require to clear the exam. and to gain knowledge from a real world perspective. So it will train a candidate to think like a hacker. It will train the candidate to use the tools to identify those flaws, uh, to spot those uh, flaws in the first place. And it will give an understanding to the candidate where to look for those flaws in the first place. So essentially when you get certified as a certified ethical hacker, you become a white hat hacker or an ethical hacker, which means that you will be looking at flaws ethically and reporting them to those organizations. The certifying authority is the EC Council. It is a very well known and a widely accepted certification authority across the globe. It is based out of the United States, but the certification is valid across the globe. So what does it take to take the exam and who can take the exam in the first place? Now, the basic criteria is that a candidate should be 18 years and above. So any person who has completed an official EC Council training is eligible to attempt the exam without going through an application process. So there are two ways you can actually attempt the exam. You either have work experience, that means you're already in the cybersecurity space, you already have some, uh, you already have some hands-on knowledge, and you want to give the exam. In that scenario, you just have to prove that you've got two years of experience with network or information security, and then you can apply to EC Council to directly appear for the exam without attending the training. Else, you can then approach EC Council and register yourself for a training course after which you can give the exam. So there are two ways that you can deal with it. What are the fees for this exam? Now the fee itself is $500 for the exam. Candidates who take the second route where they prove that they have experience and they directly want to appear for the exam, there is another additional $100 of application fee that they have to pay to EC Council for them to verify that you actually have that experience and then allow you to appear for the exam. So what are the exam questions like? What What is the exam all about? The exam code is 312-50 and there are 125 questions that need to be answered in four hours. Now that sounds like a lot of time, but trust me, it isn't. The questions are descriptive in nature. They give you a scenario. You have to identify those keywords based on the knowledge and the understanding that you have and then gauge the correct answer for that particular scenario. And the scenarios could be a little bit complex, could be a little bit confusing. 
The exam will be a multiple choice question exam. So one question with four answers. If any question has multiple answers, they will mention it in the question itself. The pass percentage cuts off at around 60 to 85 percent. So there is no fixed percentile. Every question has a different grade. Every question has a different value. And based on the questions that you have been asked and the correctness of the answers, you would either pass somewhere between 60 to 85 percent. The results are immediate. So once you complete the exam and you submit it, it will uh, let you know there itself whether you have cleared or not. So what are the skills that you require for this exam? You must have very good networking skills. And when we say networking skills, you should know your protocols. You should know how computers communicate with each other. Uh, the protocols like HTTPS, FTP, SMTP, and anything about the OSI layer. You should be good with your operating systems. The candidate should also have a very good knowledge about operating systems. And when we say operating systems, we want the candidate to know about troubleshooting methods and how the operating system work in the first manner. So you should have some basic skills about operating systems and the configuration of these operating systems. Uh, you should also know the different types of cyber attacks such as social engineering, phishing and how to prevent these attacks. So this is the exam skills. The training prepares you with all these skills. The candidate must be able to hack into an organization system with permission and erase all digital evidences. So uh, the training itself will get you accustomed uh, with all the hacking phases, how a hack is constructed, how a hack is made more effective and how the hack evolves and later on how you can delete all the evidences of the hack that has happened. So for the exam, you should have or you should be very good with your networking skills, understanding protocols and how they work, configuring operating systems and troubleshooting them. You should be able to classify different cyber attacks and know how to launch them as well. And you should be able to hack into devices and erase all digital evidences that may have happened. Password cracking and cryptography is also a very much required skill to clear the exam. There must be a few rules followed and there is a code of ethics from EC Council. So they essentially give you a non-disclosure agreement before you start the training, which you have to go through and you have to sign it, submit it to EC Council. Only then are you allowed to go forward with the exam. So what are the exam all about? What are the topics within that exam and what kind of questions would you get? So there are seven domains in this training based on which they will ask you questions. When you say background, uh, background is nothing but your knowledge on networking skills, uh, your knowledge on a little bit of operating systems, how communications happen, how protocols work and so on and so forth. Analysis would be where you analyze certain attacks and you're able to uh, analyze, let's say, packets and based on those packets, you can identify whether uh, it's a legitimate packet or is it a malicious packet with any malicious data within it. Then with security tools, you are able to talk about security as in the concepts of security like confidentiality, integrity and availability triad, the IAAA identification, authentication, authorization and accountability tri uh, uh, aspects uh, and various other concepts that are there in security. So you'll be questioned on those topics as well. Tools and programs. Ethical hacking carries a lot of tools and you should be conversant with those tools. Uh, in the During the training, there will be uh, hundreds of tools that uh, you would be going through and you would be facing questions on these tools. So there would be some basic questions like commands that would be given to you to identify what that command would execute or there would be a specific scenario given to you and then they would ask you which is the most uh, suitable tool that you would utilize to crack that particular scenario. And then there's the methodology of course of how or which steps would you take in this particular attack to be successful. Then we talk about policies and the ethics. So as you can see, all of these domains have different weightage in the exam. 21.79% for your background. So you can see the background information is very much important. Operating systems, networking, a little bit of applications, a little bit of architecture of how things are deployed. Now, CEH is normally an advanced certification, right? So there are a few presumptions that you already know a little bit about uh, Active Directory, how operating systems work, uh, how identity management works. So there's a little bit of pr presumption that you have these background knowledge, but in the training, you can be prepped up for that knowledge as well. So it does contain a little bit of insights about how these things work. Analysis is where you're looking at some scenarios and based on the evidence is given to you, you can analyze what's going on. So that's a 20.73%. Security, 
which is the main topic is at 23.73 percent tools and programs re related to security would be at 28.91 percent the methodologies would carry a weightage of 8.77 policies 1.90 and ethics 2.17 percent so you have 125 questions you can figure out uh, percentile wise how many questions you would get on each of these domains so let's have a look at these domains a little bit more the background is about network and communication technologies again like i said protocols procedures services how computers work so ports on a computer how uh, how ports are utilized by services and how communications happen over these services and these ports how we can scan these ports to identify what's going on and then try to find out vulnerabilities within them then we have got information security technologies and the information security threats as well so when i want to launch an attack on a device where would i find vulnerabilities is it just on the network uh, do i look at the operating system do i look at different applications that are there on the operating system and so on and so forth so where are the threats that's something that we need to identify and that's what this domain deals with so uh, 27 questions from this domain then analysis and assessment information security assessment and analysis and the security assessment process so uh, let's say you're in a penetration test and you want to launch an attack what is the assessment that you want to do before you launch that attack what is the process you want to conduct and uh, how you're going to analyze the vulnerability in the first place to identify which penetration test or which attack you should uh, do at that particular point in time then security would talk about information security controls controls would be all the uh, security elements that you can implement to prevent uh, hacking so firewalls ids ips antiviruses or endpoints all of these would be included in this domain information security attack detection so it's not only about how you can attack you also want to know if you're being attacked in the first place so analysis would basically identify how you're being attacked and the detection is where where you first detect that something is wrong after which you can analyze it right and how you can prevent uh, security attacks happening at your organization as well so which firewall would fit at what osi layer what uh, uh, in the architectural aspect where do you want to place an id uh, ids or an ips where would you want to place a firewall where would you want to place a utm to have a layered approach a structured structured approach towards security where a hacker would have to peel off layers of security to reach the data that they wanted to get access to in the first place so there will be 30 questions from the security domain 16 questions on the analysis and assessment domain the fourth domain is the tool systems and programs so this is where all the tools that you would have utilized <coughs> resume so this is where all the tools that you have utilized in the ethical hacking scenario and there will be questions asked about those tools so in the training there are some tools that are prescribed in the course where you'll have to concentrate on those tools you'll have to get your hands on on those tools to understand how those tools work and then give appropriate answers in this domain so there would be 36 questions for tool systems and programs then the fifth domain is procedures and methodology information security procedures and assessment methodologies would be asked over here so how would you uh, conduct a test how would you conduct a vulnerability assessment what is the method and the procedures that you would follow in conducting these tests so there would be around 11 questions uh, for this domain the sixth one is regulations and policies so this is all about uh, some basics that you need to be aware about uh, for information security policies and frameworks uh, like iso 27001 pci dss and these uh, regulations that are available in the real world that you can that you can help you or guide you to place a security architecture on your organization these questions are not going to be in depth about any of the laws or policies it's just checking your awareness whether you are aware of these laws or policies and where they can be implemented so you can see there are only a couple of questions that would come in regulations and policies and then ethics ethics is the code of conduct uh, of how you are expected to behave as an ethical hacker what is expected out of your job role what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing so there would be around three questions of ethics in the exam now let's look at a few sample questions from the exam as well so this will help you get an idea what the exam questions would be so consider the attack scenario given below there are five steps listed step one starts with user browses a web page the second step is where user uh, web server replies with the requested page and sets a cookie on the user's browser in the third step 
attacker steals the cookie by either at, uh, creating an attack of uh, on the network for sniffing or at the application with cross-site scripting or sending a fake mail or a uh, hosting a fake website by a social engineering attack, uh, which is a phishing attack. In the fourth step, attacker gets access using whatever they have done and orders a product using modified cookies. And in the fifth step, the product is actually delivered to the attacker's address, whereas the bill is footed by the victim. So what is the attack that is happening here? Identify the web application attack. Is it a session fixation attack? Is it a unvalidated redirect attack? Is it a cookie poisoning attack or is it a denial of service attack? So again, going through these steps, which of these would be the correct answer? Now in this scenario, it is C, which is a cookie poisoning attack, because if you look at the steps, the attacker basically hijacked the cookie or stole the cookie and then modified it to be utilized for some malicious reasons. Second question, which one of the following scanning techniques do attackers use to bypass firewall rules, logging mechanisms, and also hide themselves as usual network traffic. A. Stealth scanning technique. B. TCP connect scanning technique. C. Maintaining access. Or D. Fin scanning technique. Now here, as you can understand, we need to know what these techniques are, right? So what does a fin scan mean? What is maintaining access? What is TCP connect? What does TCP mean? This, uh, TCP is transmission control protocol. How does it work? So when you connect using TCP, what is actually happening in the backend? That is what the knowledge is all about. And in here, the correct answer is A, stealth scanning technique. So what do we mean by stealth? How can we achieve that? Which tools help us achieve that? That is what we want to gain an understanding in before we can attempt the exam. Question three, which of the following Wi-Fi chalking method refers to drawing symbols in public places to advertise open Wi-Fi networks? War walking, war flying, war chalking, or war driving. Now, here we need to know first that there is something known as Wi-Fi chalking, right? And there are some symbols that are utilized globally and they are recognized globally. They're standardized, by the way. And these symbols represent some type of Wi-Fi networks. For example, open Wi-Fi, which means you can freely connect to the Wi-Fi or paid Wi-Fi, where you have to pay before you can connect to the Wi-Fi. Or once you get connected, you're first to have to make a payment. Only then the Internet would be activated, right? So for different Wi-Fi mechanisms there are different options that can be utilized and which of uh, the question is which of the wi-fi wi chalking method refers to drawing these symbols in public places to advertise open wi-fi so in this the answer is war chalking now the question here itself is a little bit so here the question itself is, is a little bit mid, uh, misleading because it mentions wi-fi chalking in the question itself and that would then lead us to whether war chalking is a correct answer or not so uh, some of the questions could be a little bit misleading Let's check out the CH job roles and salaries in today's world. So what are the job roles? A candidate with the CEH certification can apply for various cybersecurity job roles such as pen tester, security engineer, and information security analyst. What is a penetration tester? A penetration tester is a person who can or who has the knowledge to attack certain applications, operating systems, networks, who can launch those attacks, who has the technical know-how of how these uh, areas work, and which tools to be utilized in these areas to create a particular attack and analyze the response of it to see whether to see whether the hack was successful or not. A security engineer would be a person who's a SOC, a security operations center employee who is looking at managing the day-to-day -day incidents that happen in an organization. An information security analyst would be a SOC analyst as well to analyze any of the alerts that have been created by security systems like IDS, IPS, antiviruses. So whenever any of these identify a possible threat and create an alert, a security analyst would have the responsibility of analyzing these alerts and determining whether they are accurate or not. So an average salary of a CEH in India is 4,76,222 rupees. That's a very specific number. Let's say it's around 4,75,000 uh, on an average. Whereas in US uh, for a pen tester, it would be $91,000 and above. So that's it for this video. I thank you for your attendance and watching this video with me. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.